Welcome to our lecture line. Next, let's take a look at the energy in an LC circuit. An LC circuit is a circuit that has both an inductor and a capacitor in it, which means that the energy will constantly go back and forth between the two, just like in an harmonic oscillator. So here's the energy stored in the inductor. There's the energy stored in the capacitor. The sum of the two at any moment in time is going to be equal to the total energy in the circuit. I is the instantaneous current and Q is the instantaneous charge on the capacitor. Here we have the definition of the self-inductance, which is the number of turns times the flux through the inductor and divided by the current. And the definition of the capacitance is equal to the charge on the capacitor divided by the voltage driving that charge onto the capacitor. So let's calculate the energy or not the, well, it, it has to be in terms of energy. Let's uh, calculate the units of the first term and the units of the second term and make sure that they are the same. In the previous video, we already did this one, but let's go ahead and do it again. So we have the units for self-inductance with number of turns times the flux divided by the current. The units for flux is Weber's, which is Newton meters divided by amps. So here, when we talk about the units here, for self-inductance, we're going to have Newtons meters divided by amps and then we have to divide that by the current the units for that is also amps so now we have newton meters per amp squared for self-inductance and for the current we have units of uh, amps so that would be amps squared and notice that the amps cancel out and we're left with the units of newton meters and of course newton meters is the same as joules so that gives us the energy, the units of energy, joules. What about the energy stored on a capacitor? It's charge squared divided by the capacitance. Now the capacitance is defined as the charge divided by the voltage, and therefore the units of that can be defined as charge, which is coulombs, and the voltage, which is volts. So we have coulombs per volt, and looking at the units here, charge squared, that would be coulomb squared in the numerator, so Coulomb squared in the numerator divided by the denominator, which is capacitance, that would be Coulombs per volt. So Coulombs per volt. Notice that one of the Coulombs cancels out and one over volt in the denominator that moves to the numerator. So this is going to be equal to the units of Coulombs times volts. A volt can be defined, let's see here, we need some space. A volt can be defined as being equal to the electric field times the distance traveled. And the units for electric field, well, that would be equal to newtons per coulomb and distance is meters. Which means the units for voltage is newtons per coulomb times meters. So we can plug that in here. So this becomes coulombs times the units for voltage, which is newtons meters per coulomb. And then notice that the coulombs cancel out you're left with newton meters, which again is equal to units of energy, joules, which means the units for the first term is indeed joules, the units for the second term is indeed joules, so you can see that this is definitely an energy equation, total energy equals the energy stored in the inductor plus the energy stored in the capacitor, and that's how it's done.